Hello, I'm Holly and today I have a very exciting video because I am doing a reading challenge, a reading vlog. This video is probably going to be quite lengthy so settle down and get a cup of tea or whatever beverage you prefer and let's get into it. So at the beginning of this year, or it might have been at the end of last year, I stumbled across this website called What Should I Read Next? And essentially what you can do on this website is you can put in the name of a book that you have enjoyed and then it will recommend you books that are similar, maybe they're in the same genre, maybe they have similar themes, morally grey characters or action, war, anything like that. And I thought this would be a great way to get some books off my own TBR that have made been there for quite a while by putting in my favourite books from 2021 and seeing which ones were recommended the most. However, when I was going to do this, I actually did this at the beginning of this year, it was just going to be a challenge for me, but because I've been so busy this year I haven't been able to actually do it, so I thought why not film it, make it a vlog. But actually when I was getting the recommendations the website was down. They must have been updating it or something and it just wasn't available for days and days so I did a little bit of research for other comparative websites and this one called Library Thing came up. I believe this one is actually run by libraries but it has a feature in it that is called recommendations or something along those lines and it is the same concept you put in a book that you like and it will recommend you books that are similar. So again I've decided to take the concept and use it on Library Thing, see which books are recommended the most based on my 2021 favourites and hopefully I will get a five star. Hopefully my reading this year will get a little bit better than it has been so far. But first let me run through my 2021 favourites so you can see what books I was inputting and then let's get into the books that were recommended. In 2021 I read a lot of Robin Hobb that I loved so I read The Mad Ship, Ship of Destiny, Fool's Errand, Fool's Fate and Dragon Keeper. I also gave five stars to Mrs Death, Mrs Death by Selena Godden, A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Maas, Ariadne by Jennifer Saint, In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado, Sorrowland by Rivers Solomon, Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman, She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan, This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amal L. Motar and Max Gladstone, Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay and The Christmas Saurus by Tom Fletcher. So those were all the books that I gave five stars in 2021 and let's see what I got recommended. The first book that I'm going to be reading is Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. This one was recommended because I loved She Who Became the Sun and This Is How You Lose the Time War and this one has been one that has been sat on my shelves for so long. I was a little bit apprehensive to go into this one because I'd heard that it was very dense and very hard to follow and that had put me off a little bit. So let's see what I actually thought of this one. currently 200 pages through Gideon the Ninth so I am listening to this one on audio and I'm really enjoying it that way. I was a little bit worried because I've heard from a few people that this was quite dense and hard to follow but listening to the audiobook is fine for me. I'm able to follow it. There are a lot of characters and this whole world that you're trying to discover but I'm very much a reader that just goes with the flow and if there is important information I kind of hope that the author will bring it back so I can still follow it. The tagline on the bottom of this is lesbian necromancers explore a haunted gothic palace in space and I feel like if that doesn't sell it to you I don't know if I'll be able to sell it better because the plot is a little bit confusing to explain. It very much just develops slowly over time. So you're following this world where there are these planets and they are the houses. So you have like the first house, the second house, the third house, the ninth house and these houses are run by a leader and then that leader has a bodyguard called a cavalier and the heads of the houses and their cavaliers are invited by the emperor to go to the first house and when the leader of the ninth house is called the cavalier kind of just gets on a ship and goes 
away because they're told that this is going to be a very dangerous thing at going to see the emperor and that they might die so the cavalier's like nope I'm not dealing with that and they go off and then Gideon is kind of forced to like take the role of the cavalier but the caveat is that Gideon absolutely hates the head of the ninth house who is this girl called Harrow and they really there's a lot of tension in between them so Gideon is like I don't want to do this but she's been promised her freedom because she is essentially captured or like kept in the ninth house because she was born there and she's been raised there and it's not a very nice place because in this world the religion the magic system is all about necromancy so she's from a very devout house there's lots of like rituals and skeletons and it's just not a very nice place to be so she's been promised that she can actually go off live her life if she does this thing and I'm not going to tell you much more than that because the plot slowly reveals itself as you go along we're very much just getting into the core plot I would say now 200 pages in and so far I am really enjoying this I love the setting it is very gothic like it says it's set in this palace that is crumbling and there is the space setting but I wouldn't say that that is a huge thing in this book you just know that there are planets and stuff like that but it could very much be in our world if that makes sense and then so far I think the real shining light of this book is the characters Gideon is a fantastic protagonist she's very sarcastic very funny and her relationship with Harrow who she hates is also very funny and I feel like there could be a little bit of chemistry between that I know it does say that it is lesbian necromancers so I'm wondering if there is a romantic plot line going forward but so far I am really enjoying this I love all the necromancy the skeletons it's very dark it actually delivers on the darkness unlike some books that say they're dark and actually aren't that bad but this one the magic is very draining Gideon herself is not a necromancer but the heads of the houses are so Harrow is a necromancer and you see her raising skeletons and it's just very fun so far the only thing I would say is that it is quite slow paced but that isn't something that I personally don't like I read Robin Hobb and those books are like 600 pages 700 pages so I'm very much used to a slower paced book and I actually quite like that but I know that not everyone is gonna love that kind of thing I have made quite a bit of progress in Gideon the Ninth I am now on page 302 I've only got this bit left and I am loving this book. So I don't know if anyone else gets this feeling where you go from just enjoying a book to enjoying a book and you're completely into it. I've had dreams about this and thinking about it all the time. I'm just so into this book. We have had a lot, a lot has happened since the last time I updated you. There have been murders, there's a mystery and I again all I said before is what I still think. I absolutely love the characters, I love Gideon, I love Harrow and I'm really starting to get to know and love some of these surrounding characters but I don't trust them, I don't trust anyone and I have actually started reading along while listening to the audiobook. I started just listening to the audiobook because I had a few things that I wanted to do that I could just listen and do at the same time but now that I'm reading it I am just so invested and I will say I was listening to the audiobook and I do think you do have to pay attention if you are going to do it that route because sometimes you can miss things when you're listening and while I think that while listening through the audiobook I was able to understand the core characters the main characters there were a lot of people from all the different houses more side characters smaller minor characters that I was a little bit confused with I got a bit of them mixed up but now that I'm reading it physically I'm just into it and I cannot wait to finish this it's gonna be a dramatic ending I can feel it I've done it I finished Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir and I loved this book so it is exactly my type of thing I loved the writing it's very sarcastic but also very beautiful there's some great descriptions I love the characters in this I love the whole world I felt that it was very slowly and cleverly revealed there weren't these huge passages of info dumping it was very much just like the characters you were just learning things as you go along and I don't know a hundred percent what I feel about the end if you've read this book you will know because the author 
made a decision and I don't know if I'm fully behind it but I do think that it fit the book as a whole. It didn't feel something completely thrown in that didn't fit with the rest of the book. It definitely continued the themes and the kind of style that we've already been introduced to. For me this book was a perfect blend of part sci-fi fantasy adventure and action. It was also a little bit of gothic horror. There were definitely some horrifying scenes in this but it also had a bit of a murder mystery plot so it was part murder mystery as well. It was just exactly my type of thing and I can't believe that it's taken me this long to get to it. I'd heard such mixed things, so many people saying it was dense, it was hard to follow and maybe just because I've read quite a few other big epic fantasy things it wasn't that intimidating for me. So I wish that I'd actually picked this one up a little bit earlier because I ended up rating this one five stars so the vlog is already a success. Even if the other books don't work for me we have a five star so obviously this was a fantastic recommendation and if any of this sounds like something you like, necromantic themes, gore, bloody violence, you've got betrayal, you've got revenge, you've got twists and turns. If any of that sounds interesting to you I would highly recommend this book. The second book that I'm going to be reading is The Deep by River Solomon. This was recommended to me based on four books that I love from last year. They were In the Dream House, Sorrowland, This Is How You Lose the Time War and She Who Became the Sun and this again was one that I've had for quite a while and let's see what I thought. the next day and as you'll see from the footage before yesterday I went to the seaside. I went to a place called Sutton on Sea which was about an hour and a half away from where I live and it's just this really chill beach. There aren't any amusements or anything like that, it's just the beach. And I had such a lovely day. It was just me and my mum and we had lots of food, we had fish and chips, ice cream and obviously as you saw I started The Deep by River Solomon. I didn't finish it yesterday, I got to page 96 but it is only a very short book so I'm hoping to finish this one today. And this one is about these mermaids who are descended from the pregnant slave women who were thrown off ships and their babies kind of gained some fish-like characteristics. And the only word that I can describe this one so far is heavy. It is such a heavy read. In River Solomon a lot of the other books that I read from this author have had that same feeling but it is something that I really like reading in books. And the basic idea is that you have the mermaids and because their history is so traumatic only one person in their whole community keeps all the memories of the past and you're following the historian who is really struggling. She has all these memories, all this trauma that is all completely just placed on her and there is this remembrance remembrance where she shares the memories with the rest of her community and at that point she doesn't have the memories like she's given them all away and then they give it back to her after a few days and she has decided I can't do this anymore like this is killing me and she decides to go off and I think that's really what 
the plot is. I wouldn't say the plot is the driving force of this book because it's really just looking at ideas of generational trauma. When you have trauma in your history, should you remember it or should you just continue with your life? Because obviously remembering these terrible things that happened to your ancestors has that weight, has that heaviness. And I think it's a really interesting way to look at that kind of topic. Also, I think this one might be based on a song, which I will have a little look at, which probably was the like starting point for this book being written. But I have loved books by River Solomon in the past and so far it isn't disappointing me. And then also at the seaside yesterday, I did pop to a charity shop and I shouldn't have bought any more books because in June it was just my birthday and I bought a lot of books there but I couldn't resist because these books were only 40p each so I paid 80p and the two books I got were The Mercies by Karen Millwood Hargrave and A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I have already read a book by Karen Millwood Hargrave before that was The Deathless Girls which was a young adult retelling of Dracula's Brides and I didn't love that one but this one is adult and I believe that it is based on a real case of witch hunts. It says winter 1617. The sea around the room remote Norwegian island of Vardu is thrown into a vicious storm. A young woman, Marin, watches as the men of the island out fishing perish in an instant. Vardo is now a place of women. Eighteen months later, a sinister figure arrives. Absalom Cornet has been summoned to bring the women of the island to heal. With him travels his young wife, Ursa. In her new home and in Marin, Ursa encounters something she has never seen before, independent women. But where Ursa finds happiness, even love, Absalom sees only a place flooded with a terrible evil, one he must root out at all all costs. It just sounds exactly my cup of tea. There's Madeline Miller has reviewed it. I also picked up A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This is one that I've wanted to pick up for a while because even though it's not my typical genre, this is a young adult thriller mystery. It is something that I've heard a lot of people absolutely love. I've heard such good things about it that I really wanted to pick it up. And all I know about this one is that it follows this girl who is in secondary school and she's doing this big project on this murder case and I believe that this murder case follows this girl who was killed and everyone just thinks that it was the boyfriend who killed himself I think and then the main character is like I don't believe that I don't think any of that is true and she does this project at school to kind of solve this and find out the truth. I've heard such great things I think that this is going to be such a quick fun read and again hopefully I can get to this one pretty soon. I have finished The Deep by River Solomon and I really enjoyed this one. I'm going to be rating it four stars. It wasn't a five star read for me and that might have had something to do with the length because it is only 150, 160 pages. But what I've said before is essentially what continued in this. The topic matter is very heavy. It is very hard to read at times. But I also found that it was a very unique look at these issues of trauma and historical trauma and loneliness and mental health and I really liked the ending of this. I thought that it was a very satisfying conclusion. I don't really have too much more to say about this one but I did really enjoy it and in terms of it being recommended to me this one was obviously a success. I have already loved books from this author before and if this sounds like something that you'd be interested in I would definitely recommend this one but do be aware of the content warnings. I will leave them in the description if you need a full list. Book number three is The Library of the Dead by T. L. Huchu. This was recommended to me based on three books. So they were Sorryland, She Who Became the Sun and Ariadne. And again, let's see if this one was a hit. I have now got to page 158 in the Library of the Dead and I'm not loving it which is such a shame because I can understand why this book was recommended. On paper it sounds like something that I would love, it sounds very atmospheric, it sounds like it's going to be very ghostly. So the basic premise of this is you have this girl and she is a ghost talker which means that she can talk with ghosts and what she does is ghosts come to her and say I have a message that I need to be delivered to a family member or a friend and she delivers that for a bit of money and that's how she supports herself. And then there are these cases of children going missing and returning with all their life force kind of sucked out of them and she is asked by one of the ghosts to solve the mystery of a missing son. And on paper it sounds like something great, it's set in Edinburgh, it's almost a bit of an alternate Edinburgh, a dystopian Edinburgh. There are mentions about things that have gone on like a catastrophe, 
there's a king on the throne and obviously there's currently a queen so what happened there and it sounds like something I would love but I'm just not getting along with it. First of all the writing style just really isn't working for me. It's written as someone would speak so it's very informal, some of the grammar isn't correct and I'm not saying that that type of writing style is wrong, it's just really a personal taste thing, it's not flowing for me and also I don't fully understand why the author chose to write this story from the perspective of a 14 year old girl. It just seems like that character could be 18. They act much older and I know that some 14 year olds can act very mature and it somewhat makes sense for the character's backstory in this why they've had to grow up so quick but I don't really understand why the character is 14 because everything they're doing could just be an 18 year old if that makes sense and everyone treats them much older than I would think that adults would treat a 14 year old. And currently I'm not really sure whether I like the main character. Their reactions to things seem very strange. At one point, I don't know if this is really a spoiler, but someone threatens them and is essentially being like, we're gonna kill you. And she's just like, Okay. Also, I think the main criticism I have so far is just that I am bored. There are so many passages in this that seem to add nothing to the story and are completely irrelevant. For example, there was a whole part where the main character was changing the toilet in her caravan, like cleaning it out. And there was another one where she was making a Battenberg. And I'm like, what is the point of that? What does that add to the story? And it's taken, we're about half, I'm about halfway through the book, and it's taken this far to even start to figure out what's going on. And I don't know, I'm just not loving it. And I think I am gonna give it another 50 pages. I'll give it to page 200 because things have just started to get going. And there is this Library of the Dead, that we don't really know too much about. There's magic and that's a very accepted part of this world that they're a magician. There's, I am very slightly intrigued in the history of this world. There's not much explanation of the things that are going on. I wish that there was a little bit more explanation, but I don't know. I don't know what I think about this. It's not really holding my attention and I'm not very excited to pick it up. And also the blurbs on this say it's fast moving, fast paced. Where? Where is that fast pace? It feels very slow to me and it feels like we're not getting anywhere but I'm gonna give it another 50 pages and then if I'm still not loving it I'm just gonna DNF it. I'd love to know if you've read this. I think it could work for some people because Ben Aronovich is one of the people who's blurbed this and I've read his book Rivers of London. Didn't like it so it might just be that it's not my book. It's not for me. I'm back and I have actually finished The Library of the Dead by T.L. Hutchu. I read another 50 pages and I only had like a little bit left at the end and it was a somewhat fast read so I just decided to go ahead and finish it. But unfortunately I'm going to give this one a 2.5. It was a bit of a disappointment for me. I was really excited to read this one but it just didn't really give me what I was looking for. While I agree with what I said before, I do think the second half was much stronger it was more action-packed, it really delved into the darkness, and that was more what I was looking for from this book. But in terms of the actual ending, the person who is the culprit who's been doing all these bad things, kidnapping children, I don't know if you can even call it a reveal because it wasn't surprising at all. I essentially knew from the moment that that character was introduced that it was them, and again that was disappointing, so it never really even led anywhere to have this shocking reveal at the end. I also think that this book is marketed a bit wrong. It is called The Library of the Dead but you're only really in the library twice. There's so little of this book that is actually set in the Library of the Dead and that's what really drew me to this book. A library, ghostly antics, paranormal stuff. And while there was some paranormal stuff all the way throughout this, I just want it to go even deeper. I wanted this library setting to be a much larger part of this book and it just wasn't. And I was also a little bit disappointed in the world building in this. As I mentioned earlier, Earlier, there are hints that this is an alternate world and that something has happened in the past that has caused society to break down a little bit. The train stations are closed, there's a lot of poverty, there's been this catastrophe, but it never actually delves into that. It never really tells you what happens and I just wish that there had been a couple 
more bits about that. This is the first book in a series. I'm not going to be continuing, unfortunately. But I understand that you don't want to give everything away in the first book, but I just felt like there needed to be a little bit more to keep me intrigued. I will say, though, that if you are intrigued in this, you like paranormal stuff, you've maybe read Rivers of London or something similar to that and enjoyed it, I would recommend it to those people. It didn't work for me, but I think that it could for those people who've maybe enjoyed something similar and this is a more diverse one than some of the others that I've seen. The main character uses Zimbabwean magic and then there is also a side character who is disabled and uses a wheelchair. So if you're looking for a more diverse Rivers of London that is set in Edinburgh and it has a little bit of the ghostly antics, a little bit of mystery, you might enjoy this. It just really didn't work for me. I didn't really like the writing style, didn't like the world building, the pacing was a bit all over the place and yeah. So this one was a bit of a shame. I wish that I had enjoyed it more than I did, but it is off my TBR now and I can move on to the next one. And then the fourth book that I'm going to be reading, I was a little bit apprehensive about including this one on the list because of some controversy that came out around this and the inspiration for this story. And that is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. As I said, I was a little bit apprehensive about this one because it came out that the author was partially inspired by residential school in Canada, which was this government initiative where Indigenous children were forcibly taken from their parents and forced to assimilate to white culture. It's a terrible, terrible thing. I would definitely recommend looking into it if you haven't heard much about it. And obviously TJ Klune is not Indigenous and there was a lot of hurt from the Indigenous community about his inspiration and how he approached this topic. The book itself is not about residential schools, but it it is about orphanages where there are magical children who are ostracised by society and forced to assimilate. And I will put some links in the description to some opinions on this. There are some people who support the author, some people who are completely against him and think that it was a terrible thing. I've got some varying reviews from Indigenous creators as well. But the reason that I'm including it in this video is because this was by far the most recommended book. It was recommended to me based on five of my favourite books from last year. So those were Sorrow Landed, Heartstopper Volume 4, This Is How You Lose the Time War, Ariadne and She Who Became the Sun. I have just finished work so I'm feeling a little bit dishevelled but I wanted to come in and update you on my progress on The House in the Cerulean Sea. So I'm reading this one on my Kindle and I started it last night and I got about 30% of the way through and so far I'm really really enjoying this one. It's exactly what I wanted, something cosy and cute and wholesome. If you don't know what this is about, this follows a man called Linus Baker who works for the Department of the Care of Magical Youth. It's something like that. Essentially he goes to orphanages who look after magical children and he says whether they're looking after the children well and he writes these reports but you already know from quite early on that it's quite dodgy that these magical children aren't being treated the best by society and then he gets this job. He hasn't really told much, he said you're gonna go to this island, you're gonna stay there for a month and see if this orphanage is doing well. He's not really told what powers the kids have until he arrives there and it turns out that they have really dangerous powers and I don't really want to say too much because I don't want to spoil it. But by the point that I've got to he's arrived and I think he's been there a few days so you've been introduced to all the children and the owner of the place and and so far, so good. I'm really enjoying it. It's really funny. I keep laughing out loud. And I also think that I'm going to absolutely fall in love with these characters, these kids. So far, my favourite kid is Lucy, but we'll see what I feel like when I get to know them a little bit more.
finished the house in the cerulean sea and i absolutely loved it i knew that i would from what i'd heard other people say about it but it definitely delivered it was wholesome it was heartwarming i fell in love with all of the characters and the setting i think in the end my favorite character was probably chauncey he was just so pure and so gentle and all he wanted to be was a bellhop and I really did love Chauncey but I loved all the characters in this. They were so well developed and so distinct. I also really loved the queer romance in this between Linus and Arthur, the head of the orphanage. The only thing I will say about this is that it is a little bit like rose tinted glasses in that it's very optimistic but maybe is not very truthful of the world and everything was solved and people were able to like challenge their prejudices which is obviously a great message to show acceptance and love but I don't know how reflective it is of what people go through in real life and that brings me to whether I would recommend this book so in the end I rated this one at five stars personally I absolutely loved it but I think in terms of recommending it it's got to be your decision whether you're going to support this author whether you're going to pick up this book again I will mention that I've got all those links in the description for you to read and look through and see both sides of the argument but it is going to be very much your decision and while I don't think the author intended any harm with this book that doesn't mean that people weren't hurt and I'm hoping that this is like a learning opportunity for him. And that brings me into my conclusion, the wrap up of this little experiment that I did. So I read four books during this experiment. It took me about a week and a half, which is actually really good for me to read that many books in such a short period of time because I haven't been reading that fast at the moment. And overall, I would say this experiment was a huge success. I had two five stars, a four star, and then a two star, but let's forget about that. At least I could read another book off my own TBR. So the first book that I read was Gideon the ninth. This one was recommended because I love She Who Became the Sun and This Is How You Lose the Time War and in terms of why I think it was recommended for this it obviously is a sci-fi slash fantasy so it's hitting the genres that these other books have. It also felt very epic and large scale even though Gideon the ninth is set in this insular place the things that happen there seem to have ramifications that have universe implications and I think This Is How You Lose the Time War is about this huge time war. She Who Became the Sun is this epic war drama so I think it has that epicness. It's also queer, all of the books are queer and then also I would say maybe the writing. I would say that especially This Is How You Lose the Time War and Gideon the Ninth had a very distinct but beautiful writing style. They are slightly different but I think if you love a flowery, descriptive, beautiful writing style, you could definitely love both of these books. So overall, I rated this one five stars. I loved the mix of sci-fi and fantasy. It was also a bit of gothic horror and there was a murder mystery plot as well. And all of that added up to something that was exactly my type of thing. I also loved the writing, the characters and the world. And while I was a little unsure about the ending, I enjoyed the book so much as a whole that I can kind of accept it for what it is and I do think the ending did fit with the tone of the rest of the book. The second book that I read was The Deep by River Solomon. This was recommended because I loved In the Dream House, Sorrowland, She Who Became the Sun and This Is How You Lose the Time War and I think the reason it was recommended because I loved these other books is because they all have heavy and emotional themes, they're also all fantastical or had sci-fi elements so some kind of speculative element and of course Sorrowland was very much I enjoyed this author before so I would probably enjoy this author again and that is exactly the case. This book really solidified for me that Solomon is an autobi author for me. This was also a very heavy and emotional read which is something that I really like delving into in my books. I like to feel something, I like to learn about different experiences and lives and then finally I would say that while this didn't have much plot I did really appreciate the unique exploration of historical trauma and how trauma has this lasting impact on generation after generation. So overall another great recommendation, another success for this vlog and that one was a four star read. Book number three was The Library of the Dead by T. Hell Hutchu and this one was a bit of a flop for me. It was definitely the lowest rated book in this vlog. I only gave it two stars. This one was recommended because
because I loved Sorryland, She Who Became the Sun and Ariadne. And while I'm not entirely sure why those books recommended this one, the only thing I can think is that maybe a couple of these books were diverse and the Library of the Dead is based on Zimbabwean magic and folklore, so maybe it was because of that. And I would also say that these books have a very distinct POV voice. Ariadne is from Two Sisters Perspectives. I don't know if it's in third person or first person, but it's definitely following a character specifically. And the Library of the Dead, the writing style was very distinct. The main character has a very distinct voice. And personally, that just didn't work for me in this case. But I do like a character that is really distinct. So maybe that's why it was recommended. I'm really not sure. Overall, I rated this one at two stars. It just didn't work for me. I didn't particularly like the writing style. The world wasn't explained enough for me. And while the second half did pick up, it did get a bit better. There was more action. I guessed the ending. So overall, I just didn't particularly enjoy this one. And then the final book that I read for this vlog was The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Clune. This one was recommended because I loved Sorryland, She Who Became the Sun, Ariadne, This Is How You Lose the Time War, and Heartstopper Volume 4. In terms of why I think this was recommended, the recommendations are quite varied. I think the Heartstopper recommendation is probably the closest comparative because it did give me the same emotions and feels that I get when I read Heartstopper. And then in terms of some of the other books it was compared to, like Sorrowland and This Is How You Lose the Time War, I think the comparison there is less obvious. It might just have been that in the year that all these books came out, the couple of years when they came out, they were just the most popular books of the year. So it's like, if you like this one popular book, you might also like this other popular book, maybe? I'm not entirely sure. I don't know how their recommendation algorithm works. And obviously I did really enjoy this one. I gave it five stars. I thought it was heartwarming and wholesome. I loved all the characters and the setting. I also particularly enjoyed the queer romance in this. And the only thing that I would say is that it does have a bit of a rose-tinted glasses approach in that everything can be fixed with a little bit of love and kindness, which we know in the real world is maybe not very accurate. So overall I think this was a great success and I would definitely consider doing this again next year and seeing what books are recommended on my favourite books from this year. And that's it for today's video, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed and to everyone out there stay curious. Bye!